The Mustang is as American as apple pie and baseball. But did you know they were about to replace it with a front-wheel drive compact car? This is the car that saved it. The SN95 Stang. As the 1980s were ending, as such was the Ford Mustang Fox 5. It had been on sale for 13 years, and it was really starting to show its age, especially in the styling department, compared to its more sleek, rounded 90s-styled rivals. And Ford wanted to replace it. Now, in their ever-knowing genius, they learned from the 1979 energy crisis, where small, compact, front-wheel drive vehicles dominated sales. And they thought, we can get the Mustang in on that. So, they launched the SN16 Mustang in Auto Week magazine in April 1987. And the outrage was immediate. You see, it was jointly developed between Ford and Mazda, which pissed people off. Then, it didn't have a V8 engine, which also pissed people off. Then, worst of all, it was front-wheel drive. Ford's small car engineering manager, John Coletti, was saying a quote, I would rather have seen the Mustang name die than the Mustang name on a probe. Now, the probe would eventually become a very successful, compact front-wheel drive car in its own right. But the public pressure when the launch of the SN16 came out was so immense that Ford agreed to make a proper new Mustang. And they gave Coletti um, not much to work with. He had a Skunk Works team without much of a budget because G4 spent all of their R&D on the probe. And if this project was not a sales success with its small budget and its Skunk Works garage team at the helm, um, it would lead to the downfall of the entire Mustang because if it didn't sell, they would end production. No pressure. As a result of this cash-strapped organization, the platform was pretty much the same as the Fox Body. In fact, it was the last Ford vehicle to ever use the famous 20-year-old Fox platform. However, it had completely brand new suspension, four-wheel disc brakes, and brand new 90s styling like its contemporaries by Patrick Schiavone. And when it launched in 1993, the 145 horsepower V6 replaced the old Ford cylinder as the base model, which is a pretty good base model for the affordable type. But we don't want affordable, we want the 5 volt baby, with 200 horsepower. The notchback was dropped because that's in the 80s, now no one cares, in favor of a convertible and a hardtop being the only two options. And you know what? It did the job sold almost three quarters of a million of these things in the first five years. It was a sales sensation. The Mustang was saved. And it got some pretty fast versions. Frank the SVT Cobra, which made 240 horsepower at 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. But what if I were to tell you that was not the tippy top of the food chain? Because we had to talk about the Cobra R which was tuned by SVT even more to make 300 horsepower. Then they ditched the rear seats, air conditioning, power windows, power seats, radio, and fog lights to save more weight. Only 250 of these things were made and they were sold exclusively to racing drivers and racing teams without a valid competition license. Hmm. Now that is exclusivity, baby. The new Fourth gen Mustang sold quite well, actually. The SN95 was a massive success throughout its first few years, but by 1999, 
He went for a refresh. You see, Ford wanted to match the Mustang with its early 90s styling, with their new, <clears throat> new Edge styling as they moved into the new millennia. So, it got a little bit bigger, a little bit rounder. I always have a nostalgic spot for this car, because this is how I was introduced to the Mustang. This facelift degeneration, so I always have a nostalgic sweet spot in my heart for this one. The V6 got new split port injection to bump power up to 200 horsepower, while the GT had a 4.6 liter V8 making 260 horsepower and over 300 torque. And just like any good Mustang, it had lots and lots and lots of special editions, like the 35th anniversary, the 40th anniversary, the Bullock, the Mach 1, and the brutal Cobra R. But remember all of those crazy kind of... But remember all those crazy versions like the Bullet and the Cobra R and all those fancy schmancy stuff? Well, what if the maddest version ever was none of those? I'm talking about the Mustang Boss 351. Ford saw Chevrolet and Dodge making a bunch of new supercars and they wanted in. But you can't have a supercar without an engine, so you gotta build a new engine, obviously. And they decided to test bed this engine in the Mustang. And oh boy, it was quite something. It was a quad cam, supercharged, 6.8 liter, all aluminum V10, making a minimum of 605 horsepower. Ford Australia designed the engine by cutting off two cylinders from the 4.6 liter V8 from the GT and then bolted the two together. Once they attached the two engines to make one, they then used two processors for two throttle bodies and two air meters. Ironically, the massive engine, since it was made out of all aluminum, was actually 60 pounds lighter than the Cobra R's iron V8. And they managed to squeeze this colossal V10 into the 1999 Cobra prototype. Apparently during drag strip testing, it could do the quarter mile in 11.5 seconds and 118 miles an hour. But no one has ever been crazy enough to actually test the top speed of this vehicle, although I bet it's a lot. I knew that the engine and the car was good enough that Ford got its seal of approval on it. And the engine was made into a 7 liter version for the GR1 concept and the 427 concept. And while it never made it to production, none of the vehicles I mentioned did, the fact that it exists and still exists to this day is quite something. But we are reaching the end of an era. The 4th gen Mustang the SN95 finally retired in 2004 after selling almost 1.7 million cars. That is not bad. The SN95 may very well be one of the most important cars in the history of Ford. Because the Mustang is the most popular sports car of all time with over 10 million sold. And they bet that legacy that history, that financial success entirely on one car. A car with a second-hand chassis with no money designed by a bunch of skunkworks engineers in a garage. And you know what? It was really, really good. And a return to form that the Mustang had been lacking for some time.